to Witch Doctor Ultimate, but here comes Tong Fu with the Dark City. The fight is real for Tong Fu. Against Morphling's pretty solid. Wall of Replica Morphling can kill a lot of <laughs> kill a lot of his own heroes. Uh, vacuum, you know, Tornado, vacuum, Meatball, all of those abilities combined together. Vacuum Epicenter as well. So they have this. from Tong Fu, but you're not relying, uh, you're relying on a Razor and an Invoker to carry the game for you. Again, we talk about the late game, but really, we should talk about more about, Tong Fu need levels on Kabu, they need levels on U9, they need a, a Blink Dagger immediately on Sand King, and Xiao Lev needs levels as well, so they're going to be playing their own passive game for a little bit. I mean, they'll put pressure on DK early enough. And make sure that they can maybe shut them down, but DK will get some room to farm here, I think. I don't I don't see Tong Fu being aggressive, and even DK can be aggressive. You look at this lineup and a, and a Viper and a Centaur, you could be aggressive early on as soon as you maybe even get Stampede. You don't even need a Blink Dagger up in black. So they'll roam down, they're going to try to maybe find a pickoff here with the Smoke of Deceit. I want to get some introductions, but I don't want to gloss over any kills here. Miss them. Oh, God. They run right into him. LPC, Token, he's back. Cask, stop. First blood, Dreamy, you. That's the one here you want to get it on. Waveform comes through, and they water right over him. Nicely done there. So, first blood goes the way of DK. You've got Black Dot Z. He'll be on the Centaur Warrunner. Feet, that's the standard, apparently, will be on the Viper. Cold Snap, the Witch Doctor. Meanwhile, you'll have XBG playing your Rubik, uh, Dream U to play your Morphling, and uh, that actually, I think, is it. To round out your DK lineup. For your Radiant side, Tong Fu, LPC playing your Sand King, Red on your Skyrath Mage, Shaleb will be on your Invoker. Um, in the mid lane, we'll see U9 on your Razor. Top lane, off lane, Kabu on your Dark Seer. So, again, I talked about how he desperately needs uh, levels here. I still head up to the top lane. And this is the problem with the, the Darks here. And the problem with a lot of their heroes is that they're really requiring levels. Level 8 or 9 before you start getting involved in fights with the Razor. Level 9 to 11 for the Invoker. Level 11 or 12 for Kabu and the Darks here. He might be involved earlier, but I, I think that's what you're looking for right now. Is just to try to secure levels and try to stop the opposing team from farming effectively. Meanwhile, it is Morphling down bottom in an aggro tri lane here. They'll roam through with the Skyrath Mage as well. And I like this. They can make this decision because guess what? Uh, LPC has level 1 Burrow Strike. <clears throat> and... He, they keep him in the lane. They, they force him to stay in lane rather than for him to go to the jungle. However, there still is potential for Tong Fu to get a team fight going their way, get a couple of kills here. This, this could be lethal for either side. I don't know who's going to come out on top, but <clears throat> I can, I can tell you right now that I'm, my camera is going to be fixed on this bottom lane for the most part. I will switch over to the mid lane occasionally and just see how that matchup is going. So the the classic Razor versus Viper matchup, but again, Viper can do some work here with Nether Toxin up against the Razor, and uh, maybe get closer skin a bit early as well because Plasma Field will do some work and that'll probably be maxed out. <clears throat> U9 pauses the game. Tong Fu had some. Um, Server issues, I believe, before. They say that they're good now, and we're going to jump back into the game immediately. So just a little bit of a break. Swift pause is completed, and back into the game we go. They're actually leaving Shell Ev alone. And, and I really do like this. This is something I just noticed. The Sentry Ward's getting placed down, and obviously the Observer Ward's as well. They're blocking all of the camps, and... Tong Fu realize that they have nowhere to go in terms of uh, getting farm for the Sand King. They smoke up, they might even head top. This might even just be a solo safe lane invoker for here on out. However, already the rotation, DK do pick up a uh, Bounty Ruin and Cold Snap and XBG just making sure that that doesn't go to the, the Razor. But, Static Link going, U9. And again, I feel like Feet could could right click him down a little bit and get him low, even with you know missing some damage. Nether Toxin still provides at least an extra bit of damage going their way. So, so. Meanwhile, rotation. They might wrap on mid here. 
Sand King's here. You've got the Skyrath Mage with the Concussive Shot as well. They want to make something happen. Static Link is going to go. There's the Concussive Shot. Burrow Strike, the TP is coming through. I don't think they have the damage here. But XBG, Telkinesis, he's taking a bit of damage. Plasma Field going as well. That's going to be a kill going the way of U9. Meanwhile, he's taking a lot of right click. The Poison Attack, not nearly enough. U9 survives. There's too much damage stolen. He was down 84. Even then, Nether Toxin could not grab the kill. Good try coming up from feet, but an excellent gank coming through and forces the TP rotation coming in. Not only do they force XBG, but they also force Cold Snap here at the mid lane as well. Space created in the bottom lane. That's what they're saying for Shallow. And now Dreamy U trying to get some more CS. He's up to 12 CS. He's off to a good start here, off to the races, but... And with the first blood as well, 650 gold boots first. Basilius and some regen and GG branches in the in the tank here. He'll, he'll pick up his Aquila rather soon, I imagine. Uh, as it uh, looks like Feet grabs a Boots, Wraith Band, and a Tango. Bottle now picked up for U9 as well. Top lane, Cold Snap getting involved to the kill. Stomp and Double Edge going through to grab the Darkseer. And that's the problem. You can surge away, but Cask is going to keep you close. Darkseer, not the easiest to gank, but certainly can be ganked 16 last hits for dreamy you 700 almost 800 gold in the bank now lpc was trying to burrow strike maybe and grab that bounty room <laughs> he's like now nah, maybe I'll, I'll think better of that no no sorry feet now in the mid lane continue to farm up static link going but guess what you got poison attacked my friend and now Feet can start putting on the pressure here on U9, and he will do so. U9, every time he comes in for a last hit, he'll take a poison attack hit. That's something that's huge for Feet. This is going to get him back. And in fact, he's going to continue to control this lane. And U9 is actually just... He's got 16 last hits, so he's got plenty of last hits, but now he's below half health. He actually has a regen room, though, so he's good to go. He pops it real quick. Make sure the corrosive skin doesn't take it off. And I'll move from there. <clears throat> Burrow Strike, Dream you Strike Morphing, he's fine. Not enough real right click damage coming through. Waveform. And uh, LPC Sandstorm smartly and backs away. U9 back in the mid lane. So that bottom lane wasn't as big of a factor as I thought it was going to be. Top lane, they're trying to shut down Kabu. Look at Cold Snap come in. He has his cask. He might even use it. Kabu's trying to man up. There's the Malphite going, or Maledict rather. And there's going to be the cask going in. It's going to bounce? No. It didn't bounce at all for whatever reason. And Kabu actually is just going to back away. He'll have to eat some tangos, but uh, he's okay. No gold for you. Shallow. Sitting down here in the bottom lane. Now they're putting pressure on him as well. Sand King does have his boots of speed, but he has nothing else on uh, other other than that. They they need to stack camps for him, and they need to get him farm, or else this blink dagger is not going to be here anytime soon. And, and Stampede is going to go. There's going to be a static link, but Unai gets obliterated by feet as he runs in with the Stampede, and they get the kill. Looks like maybe some lag coming out here on the uh, DK side. I'm not sure. Either way, you're looking at it right now, and uh, top three CSers in the game. Centaur surprisingly leading the way. And it looks like he has his tranquils done. He's building towards the Blink Dagger now. He's off to a hot start. More Flink sitting on boots. Basilius, 700 gold. Something coming out. He, he got a bottle, so there's that. So he actually... He has a Kila. He'll probably get a Kila bottle and then go for a Hero Blade, like we saw... Um, I believe it was U9 last time around, not too long ago, on the other side, so. LPC and Red, they're thinking about diving here. Not the most uh, ideal situation to go behind that Tier 1 tower. Especially into a Sunstrike, Cold Snap, Concussive Arcane, and Ancient Seal. Burrow Strike, level 2 Sandstorm now completed up. Stacking should be finally getting underway, commencing here for LPC, and... He still could have a pretty early blink dagger here. As bad as this game is gone for Tong Fu, they're still certainly in this. Tarkshire's level 7, so he's getting some nice experience. Only down to the uh, Viper in the mid lane, who's gotten a couple of kills going his way, and that's why he's doing so well. Double damage rune. I love, yes, I love seeing phase boots on Viper. 
and this is just huge. And uh, I imagine uh, the thing is, when you see Vipers, especially when there's no other mech carriers, you'll usually usually see them go treads mech. But phase is fine. Even if you do go mech, phase is fine. You're not as tanky as you usually are, but. To get away from U9 and a static link is important, but also at the same time, it gives you that extra bit of damage that they can't really deal with early on in the game. If he rotates down bottom, he can grab a kill easily. <clears throat> or maybe even two. And Feet is uh, he's going to work in this lane. XBG, bro, strikes on strike into trouble. He might fall. Arcane Bolt coming in. Ancient Seal, the right click as well. They get it done. Now they're chasing after Cold Snap, getting brought down. Not dead yet. Maledict is going to go. They will grab one kill. Will they trade? It looks like he is going to pop on the other side. LPC will fall. A two for one trade when it's all said and done. Dreamy does pick up that regen room. His treads are now done. He's got his bottle. Getting the Kilo, like I said, and it will fly out to him now. <clears throat> and that's a big fight going for Tong Fu, apparently. Getting those two kills. Denied. However, Centaur continues to farm up. Everything's still going pretty evenly now as we look at the graph. Actually, TK do have this 2,000 gold lead, so... Something to keep in mind. <clears throat> Smoke of Deceit popped. Cold Snap and XPG. Looking ahead towards the mid lane, it looks like, and trying to find a pickoff. Top lane, Smoke of Deceit gank going through. Stampede on cooldown for 10 seconds. Burrow Strike ready to go for LPC. Stomp gonna go and can't get it off. Sunstrike, Ancient Seal, they don't even need it. There's the wall coming out. Cast coming in, vacuum not available. He has, of course, the mana with the Soul Ring to use it. And he's gonna surge away instead. He decides against it. Burrow Strike, Dreamy U, Ancient Sealed up, but they can't get it before he starts morphing. And he should be fine. Vacuum back in, wave. And wait for not available. Meanwhile, Kabu getting telekinesis. Iron Shell almost brings Cold Snap down, but he stays alive. In the end, it's a two for one trade. Definitely going the way of DK there, especially because the core gets involved. And this is what I was talking about a bit in the drafts is that Dreamy U on a Morphling can get kills, can get involved in these fights. Even as a Morphling. That's why that hero I think is so solid right now. I do apologize. I'm losing my voice a bit. Oh god, it's, it's gone, man. It's leaving me. <clears throat> well. Bottled up haste through now coming out from Dreamy You. He's sitting on 1100 gold as well. I'm very interested to see if he's going to be going for... It looks like he probably will go for the Ethereal Blade straight up, honestly. He's got the bottle. He'll probably get a BKB after, or maybe he'll get BKB then he'll go for Ethereal Blade. That makes the most sense to me. U9 getting right click down by uh, Feet here. He is going to be going for the mech, so... Move speed, pretty nice, especially against the Razor. And I think that's why he picks up the item. For the phase boots. For the mech, it's it's pretty much just standard. It's core. No one else is building a mech on your team. It's your responsibility feat, so. <clears throat> Meanwhile, LPC, he's still farming away. He's recovered nicely. However, Black, he's he's pretty close to getting his blink dagger himself. That'll be nice. Last hits look in the way of, uh, well, Feet's got 57 right now. U9's coming in. Tread's done. He'll be going for a drum next, it looks like, as he has the Bracer. And 11 minutes in, not the highest amount of CS in the game, but a lot of rotations, musical lanes coming out. Who knows who's going where, honestly. It's all over the goddamn place. I can't even figure it out. 
But uh, what you can figure out is that Dreamy U is looking for more farm. He's also looking for the 12 minute rune and he'll find it. And Kabu smartly says, I don't want to fight into that, even though it is only a solo morphling there. Bottom lane regen rune. Red will babysit it and looks like Unine will pick it up here. XBG is level 6, and this is good. 12 minutes in, usually you see some Rubik's having a tough time getting to that level 6, but all the supports are doing well. They're getting levels, and that's probably the most important thing. Mystic Flare is going to start coming out. Spell Steel is going to start coming out. It's really important, especially for a Rubik. You, you're, I mean, the fact that he's been involved already in a couple of kills and his team's ahead is a very good sign for him. And this is before Spell Steel. With Spell Steel now, he can make some big plays. The spells that he can steal are actually really, really good. Burrow Strike obviously is going to be huge. He stole four spirits from the Invoker. So he's got an entire repertoire from Invoker to steal. You can steal Mystic Flare, Ancient Seal, Arcane Bolt. Anything from Skyrath Mage is probably worth it. Maybe not Concussive Shot, though. Even though that's actually pretty good. Uh, Static Link and Plasma Field. Plasma Field probably the better. Uh, meanwhile, Centaur Stampede. Stop and actually misses Black a little bit off Matt Blink. A bit unfortunate. He just got that too. Tifa -tee Rotation. Surge. Blink. Burrow Strike. Feet caught out. Sun Strike gonna go. There's the wall. They split the damage. Vacuum back in. But there is gonna be the Death Ward. Placed down by Cold Snap. Doing work. U9 about to fall. Stay alive. Barely. But they do get the kill on the Skyrath Mage. And that's a one for nothing. Blink stop. They're gonna go right back in on Kabu. Double Edge would kill him. Bro Strike comes in. They keep Kabu alive. DK being a bit too over aggressive. However, the Viper does get the kill on Kabu with his corrosive skin, I believe. Good trade now coming out. And Tonku, I believe, comes out on top. And not by much, apparently. But I don't think that counted. Uh... Well. There's another kill, I believe, that I missed. That they're missing there, but I'm not sure. Well, either way, Dream U is going to pick up an Ultimate Orb, so it is going to be the Lincoln Sphere, so I stand corrected. Going for the Ultimate Orb into the Lincoln Sphere this game, and that's probably a good choice. Burrow Strike, obviously. You've obviously got Static Link. Anything from Skyrath Mage, which is kind of the problem. You can just break that Lincoln Sphere with one Arcane Bolt. They're going to find Dream U. Link, Burrow Strike, Ancient Seal as well. Sun Strike's going to go. Epicenter, they blow him up. Darks are getting the kill. So that's exactly what they needed to do to keep pressure on DK. Although there is this 3,000 net worth lead, if they continue to use this Blink Dagger effectively, they can stop the Sit or the uh, Morphling Rabbit from farming. Split pushing his feet, Viper strikes to go, Blink stop, they want to go on U9, and they're going to find the kill. They blew him up. XPG comes through as well, just to zap him real quick and take the kill secure. Radiant structures are fortified. Dyer's top tower is under Tier 1 tower is going to take a hit and will fall down. And first tier 1 of the game. In general, on both sides. Kabu trying to take the tower. The raiding side will get it. Maldit going. They will use the death ward as well. Vacuum in to stop it. Waveform up for the backside. Adapt to strike. And Viper gets the kill with the right click. Nice gank coming out. They do get the tower though. So a bit of a trade. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. How's the invoker doing? He does have his Midas, he's used it a bit. He's going Necro, no surprise there. So Tom Kuo applying pressure across the map. They can split push with the Invoker and they can fight elsewhere. And especially once you get your eye of the Storm Agatum Scepter for the Razor, you can definitely go for some split pushing. He'll build a mech though, I believe. Maybe he doesn't go for the mech this game though. And he has Shred's Drum, and looks like he might just go straight into the Ags afterwards. Unless someone else is building the mech, which I don't see anybody going for that on the side of Tong Fu. The Blink Dagger has already done a lot of work. In fact, speaking of the Blink Dagger, Sunstrike, beautifully done. We'll grab the kill. Cold Snap getting chased down. Uh, that's not the fight you should be taking, but here comes the Razor Plasma Field. I have the Storm. They can't get the kill on Cold Snap. They will get the kill on the other side. Double kill for Zhao Liv. Sunstrike was stolen. Blink Burrow, not there. They're still diving behind the tower. Plasma Field might get this kill. I don't think so. Cold Snap's pretty... Pretty tanky, but there's the Blink Burrow Strike. Just when I think they can't get it done, LPC grabs the kill. Razor picks it up. The tower, and uh, three dead now. DK starting to fall behind suddenly. These fights are definitely going in, way, in the way of Tong Fu, and 
This is something they were missing early on in the game. And now they're getting room to not only get kills, but get farm. A lot of this is because you see Drew Mew, he's just split pushing and farming elsewhere across the map. Which is exactly what he needs to do. Keep split pushing, keep pressuring other towers, keep getting farm, get towards that Lincoln Sphere, which he's not too far off. He's got enough for a Perseverance. He has the ultimate orb. I mean, you're getting close now for Dreamy You here. He's actually accelerated quite quickly in terms of his own farm, so... Although, that last engagement only gives Tongfu about 1,000 in net worth. And it gives him a bit more experience, but... DK still have the lead. And Unan continues to just... Sit and right click and farm away. 1500 gold in the bank. Will he buy the mech? Will he buy the AGs? Will he buy the BKB? That's the real question. Also, SNY is another option, but I highly doubt he'll build that. That just nobody builds that item anymore for whatever reason. SNY, the days of SNY have come and gone, I believe. Radiant's bottom tower is under Tier attack. one tower, the mid lane taking a beating. Do Radiant they fight this? Uh, they've got fallen. the death ward coming out. They have viper strike as well. They've got the mech deny. No such luck. The replicate was there. He's still farming top. Engagement on the backside, maybe from LPC. He's got Epi. They're thinking about attack. fighting this, but they're looking for the perfect vacuum, I believe. And it looks like they know that he's over here in the trees. So they're spreading out effectively. Nice positioning coming out from DK. And Dream of You is now stuck between a rock and a hard place, so he's got to TP out. Just needs the rest for the Lincoln Sphere. And then you still need a couple more items for him to start being involved. But once he gets maybe uh, Ethereal Blade Manta style, you're set, man. You're good to go. Sun Strike coming in. Well, they know this is happening. What what decision do you make? I mean, you, you've got Epicenter. You've got Vacuum. You've got Wall. Vacuum coming in. There's the Wall as well. Epicenter getting channeled now, and it will get off, it looks like. He gets the Sandstorm. No Epicenter. It got canceled by one. I'm not sure. Might have been the cast coming through. Meanwhile, Black is getting brought low. It'll be a one-for-one -one exchange at the beginning of the fight. Plasma Field not killing Dreamy U. He got low. Now they're going to chase him to Cold Snap. It looks like he'll fall. And they will take Roche, it looks like. U9 getting the double kill. And he'll probably take the Aegis as well. He's going to be going for the BKB as he picks up the Ogre Club. And Tong Fu. They take the Aegis yet again. Nice fight coming out for your Radiant Squad. And that was just a... Really strange engagement. DK, there's, they, they saw the sun strike come in. There's no reason for them to stay in the Roche pit. They didn't have a pick off before they went into the pit. So a bit questionable for me. On top of all of that, Tong Fu now pick up the Necro 3 for Zhao Liv. And on, th this is going to be huge. If you can drain the mana of the Morphling, although he does have a Lincoln Sphere now, and make sure that he can't morph, that'll be huge. If you can drain the mana of pretty much anybody, really. Uh, I think the highest value target, though, is the Morphling. But more so than anything, it's about the split push and putting pressure on towers. And they had a lack of tower pressure up until they get an Aghanim Scepter for the Razor, which is not anytime soon, as he did go for the BKB. So the Invoker is going to fill that role by having Forge Spirits and having Necro Warriors. Necro Archers as well. And on top of that, he can alacrity his Necro Warrior, and the damage that you can deal with that is absolutely ridiculous and absurd. Unai getting chased down, that's the Aegis for free. Gets caught out of position, and they have no help coming his way. He might just die again. Deathport coming through, but no cast to start things off, so... He pops the drum, and he gets on out of there. And... He'll be very close to his BKB, so there is that. But what about... What about uh, Dreamy You here? Lincoln Sphere, next item, probably Ethereal Blade. He's still a ways away, but this is where your farm starts getting out of control. Your Morphling can farm very quickly now. Because of that, exactly. Not only does he have the regen coming out from the Lincoln Sphere, but he has a bottle as well. You can see how quickly he is regening the mana. Plasma Field. 
Stream you. Waveform forward. Right clicking on Unai. Blink stomp. Unai might go down yet again. And I don't think he got his BKB. He did it. He just... Uh, he was so close. Meanwhile, on the backside, here comes the Invoker. He's running into the entire team. Dream of you. Oh, Cold snap coming in. Oh, Waveform's away. And he's gonna use... The uh, Radiant the mana burn and Dream you cannot strength morph head. anymore. Meanwhile, Sunstrike does not get the kill so close. Brewer Strike misses on everybody coming out from LC. Meanwhile, Feet and Black Z getting out of there. And it's not time to fight anymore, boys. Sentry Ward on the deck. Feet might get caught out. Brewer Strike, Mystic Flare, boom. He should fall. No, pops the BKB. The epicenter wasted here. Ooh, Feet still taking cool. a lot of right click damage, however. They might try to turn this fight around. Death Ward gets cancelled immediately. Blank stomp onto two. Waveform onto two. Beautifully done. And now LPC coming and trying to salvage what he can, but they're turning it around. DK with a three man death squad coming out. Drew Miu getting involved. Double kill coming out from the Viper. Excellent play coming out from DK. Black Dot Z with a huge blink stomp. The double edge coming through as well with the waveform. Song Fu get caught with their pants down. Oof. I hate to see that happen, but now a free tier two tower. Well, maybe not free. The glyph is gonna go. Jaliv heading back to the mid lane. His Necro units not being super effective in that last fight. And they're getting cutted. Tong Fu are just getting cutted right now, which is kind of surprising. Waveform, four steps coming out. It's not even Black Z is built yet. Meanwhile, Unai getting jumped on. Waveform coming through. Unai tells you he's, just, he's done. He cannot finish his BKB. Big vacuum, big wall, big burrow strike. Mystic Flare onto all four, but the mech keeps them alive and healthy. Dreamy you, Ancient Seal, feet pops the BKB. Black Z jumping back in. Rubik grabs the kill on Kabu. Spell was stolen. That's Stephanie Blast. Cold Snap getting chased down. Deafening Blast missed on every hero there. Blink Burrow. That'll be on Cold Snap. Cold Snap about to fall. And will. Double kill for LPC. And as good as a fight and as good as an engagement as that was for Tong Fu, I'm surprised they did not get more. That's shocking to me. Oh, God. Now I'd suck my camera off of LPC. I thought Rubik gets out for free there, but nope. He falls. So it actually does really go in favor of Tong Fu with that second part of that fight. And now Feet looking to head up towards that top rune spot. I'll pick up the bounty. And uh, you've got to worry for Tong Fu. The BKB's still not done yet for U9, and he should have had that five minutes ago. Skyrath sitting on Arcanes and he's got an urn. Kabu has the mech. So that's the one here I forgot they had. And I talked a lot about the mech, but I forgot to mention that Dark Shirt can build that pretty effectively. LPC Blink Force Staff is done. So mobility items are there for the Sand King. On the other side of things, Witch Doctor has an Ogre Club, whether that's the start of an Agonims or a BKB. Who really knows? Four staff is now done for Centaur. Uh, Ag should be being built now for the Viper as he already has his BKB. There's the BKB coming out from Razor. And I expect the next big fight to be around, or be around Roshan. So. Dreamy U has maybe an item coming out? Eagle Song. So it is going to be that Ethereal Blade, unsurprisingly, as he already has the Lincoln Sphere up and ready to go. But Waveform, he really wanted that rune. He's not going to get it. He actually replicated it out as well. PC blinked in looking for a burrow. Couldn't find it. XBG. Sentry Ward immediately placed, and they find the, uh, the Observer coming out. But they know that LPC is up here. And another sentry place down. Epicenter getting channeled. Blank in. It's going to be on a two. This might be a two for one. There's going to be the sun strike. Cold snap coming in. Does throw down the casket. The ultimate doesn't do enough to get the kill. And they will clean up that last ward. So, yeah, that's that's XPG for a ward. I don't know if that's worth it, but. Courier about to deliver an Aghanim Scepter here for feet. No, he actually needs the point booster. So it's it's not quite there yet. 
What about Roche? Still have no idea when he's up. Oof. It's a bit early in the morning for me, so bear bear with me. <laughs> so we're we're finishing off the last game here of the Summit qual uh, Chinese qualifiers for day number two. This is a close match, the closest we've had. Two thousand net worth lead for DK. Experience wise, it's even. And Dreamy U continues to farm up a storm, and he's that much closer to getting his ethereal blade. He'll have it in three hundred gold. This is probably where it starts getting out of hand, even though you have the BKB up now on uh, Razor and a point booster as well. He's probably not your your shotgun target, but anybody else's prime pickings here. I'm, I, I maybe shall live is a, a bit too tanky, but every, I, I think everybody else probably dies immediately. To uh, well, hold that thought. Blink bro coming in into black dot Z. He'll get caught out. Mystic Flare going through as well. They blow up that poor Skyrath. So he gets caught out of position. And that's something they really can't afford right now. Just casual pickoffs. You already have too many items going the way. Meanwhile, Shallow is getting caught out. Viper Strike. Short cooldown. No reason not to use it. But easy ghost walk coming out now from the uh, Invoker. The Necro units are not pushing up now, they are. They may look for a tier 2. Meanwhile, it happening. Epicenter blowing up a lot of heroes. Dreamy you and everyone else has to back off. They actually kill uh, the Scarif Mage again. No, that was the Rubik, excuse me, on the other side of things. And Ethereal Blade now finally finished. And the problem with that was that Feet wasn't there. Oh, the Sun Strike! He might die to the Forge Spirits! Ooh, he bottles up and he will stay alive, but. Very close for feet in that mid lane. That Sunstrike on point, man. Jalev, it's something I haven't mentioned. His Sunstrikes have been pretty on point, but the problem is he hasn't had enough events to really make a huge impact. But, um... Yeah, the, the, what I was gonna, the point I was gonna make was that the mech from feet was not there in that top lane engagement. They might have been able to stay and t take that fight after the epicenter had gone off. But without a mech, you know, really tough to fight into that. So... They kind of have to back off from that tier 2 tower. Roshan is up. Cold Snap, actually. They're pinging on it now. That's going to be the Viper pinging. There's a Scythe done for the Invoker. That's huge. And Shalev will be heading up to the top lane. So this Scythe could change things around. Unfortunately, you still have to go through the Lincoln Sphere. But if you hex up this Morphling, you might be in an okay position to get the kill on him. It's just so difficult to bring him down. So damn slippery. Top lane. Dreamy you. He does have a replicate, so it is only the invoker here now, but they are rotating everyone else up to the top lane. Kabu and LPC are here with a rotation as well from the Skyrath Mage. Ancient Seal is what they need, but they have to try to Well, never mind. He's just he's he's gone. Back to hang out with his homies, I suppose. That's gonna be in the Roche pit. Drew me will pick up the stages, so now you gotta take these last tier two towers, and DK have a significant advantage. And it's not one of those games where DK were behind with a hero that can carry later on in the game. DK are ahead, and they have this Morphling. And I believe, I mean, you look at the net worth right now, he's third, and Viper is, is first, so they have a significant advantage. Again, the problem is going to be the Invoker, the Razor as well as locking him down. He's tanky, but can he withstand the right clicks of Dreamy U at this point? Well, right now he's got a double damage. So, if Dreamy U gets another item, say something like a Scotty or a Manta style, all of a sudden he gets even more agility or even more tankiness, it's going to be tough to deal with him. It already is tough to deal with him, man. Jesus, we're talking about a Morphling at 31 minutes in with a Lincoln Sphere and an Ethereal Blade. That's, those two items together just make your life a living hell. Song Fu, uh, Aghanim Scepter's still not there for U9, so he really can't push up to the high ground. They can send the Forge Spirits, no Necro Book for 23 seconds, Tier 2 Tower's gone. They'll try to force rotations back here, but I think DK can push faster, and they they will go up to the high ground. Glyph is not available. They used it for the Tier 2 Tower. That was not the best play, I think. Dreamy U is going to work on the Tier 
to tier three tower. This might be a fight that goes poorly for Tongku. They might lose the game. Mech coming up onto Dreamy U. He's actually rather squishy. And concussive shots gonna go. He'll wait for him away. He actually adapted strikes and he got the ethereal blade off on Kabu. Stampede just to get everyone away. They're actually catching out LPC. Detection, does anybody have it? Bro strike away from LPC. He might make it out alive. Blink further. No way they can catch him. Nice play coming out from the Sand King to make a way make his way out of there. Ugh. And the Necro units, they're down, so now they don't have Necro units either to, to help them defend against this push. So no Glyph, no Necro units. I have the Storms down for 30 some odd seconds. They do have two ultimates, two big ultimates. Sand King Epicenter, Wall Replica coming out for the Darkseer. He would love to have level 3 Wall, but he's not quite there yet. And Dreamy U is like, he's licking his lips, man. He really wants to get up there and take that set of racks, but how patient will they be? Aegis is ready to go. I think this is their time. You don't have to rush it, but Adaptive Strike, Ethereal Blade coming out, reverse that order. Viper Strike coming as well onto U9. That actually just pushes him all the way back. He, he had so much damage, he has to go back home. And they're putting some chip damage on the range barracks here. Pipe's gonna go. Now they're ready. This is it. Pipe is the universal sign of, hey, we're ready to push up into the high ground. We're ready to take the racks now. And for, uh, well, Bro Strike coming in, but no epicenter. Meanwhile, LPC stopped up. Bro as well, but there's the deafening out of two. Meatball as well. They blow up the Rubik's Dream of you very low. He does have the Aegis. He's gonna replicate out. Walls on the ground. Unai getting caught. BKB. He's done. Buyback status. Who's got it? There will be the buyback from the Razor. They're taking down the Necro units as well. Dream U, Age is still there for two minutes, by the way. They avoid the EMP. Time for them to take a set of racks. Tornado flying in. Tongfu's U9 looking to go in more. Feet just gets concussive shotted. Back to the range racks we go. Melee racks get it brought down now. One set of racks done. Bottom might be the next engagement. Oh, they blew up that poor, poor Skyrath mage. That's the Ethereal Blade coming into effect, ladies and gentlemen. Viper Strike on the Shallow. That'll push him back. Blank Stomp Double Edge. Where's the rest of the damage? There it is. The waveform coming through. Feet gets the kill. And now they're just running over Tong Fu. And they'll back up. They might play patiently here. It looks like they aren't going to go for that tier 3 down bottom as DK put all of the moves on a Tong Fu. And Tong Fu have looked good. I mean, maybe not necessarily in the, at the end of this game, but in the first game they played today, they, it's not like they're playing a horrible Dota. They, they're playing solid Dota. It's just that DK is playing a bit better. And their rotations are crisper. Their team fights are smarter. They're playing methodical. Now you have an Assault Kuras, so I don't even know what to do against that. That's just some damage that you've got to deal with now. The Asha up for Dreamy You will build into a Manta style more, more probably. Actually, he's an Ogre Club. Yasha into a BKB, or is that an, the, the fabled SNY for a Morphling? I don't think it's the latter. I think it's more than likely going to be the former Yasha into a BKB, but I've been wrong before. You probably would have been able to finish off the Sonic by that point, so I don't know. They're heading bottom, and U9 is, uh, well, he's just going to back away. And he's had a rough time trying to get to that Agonims. He's had that point boost forever, and he finally gets up the Ogre Club. And here's the buyback status. Guess who has it? Just the Invoker. Maybe the Sand King has it by the time the fight breaks out, but... <clears throat> he, sh he probably should. And, and that's going to be huge, unless he already gets his Epicenter off. If he gets his Epicenter off in the first fight, and it doesn't do work, and he has to buy back, then there's a good chance at that point it's going to be over. There we go again. The pipe is going to get popped, and they're going to push up to the high ground once more. Vacuum. Wall coming in. Burrow Strike misses on everybody, but there's the stop. Boom. Ethereal Blade blows up one. They blow up another. They're running right over Tonku. This is going to be GG. There it is. Ooh, nine getting brought low, and Feet blows him up. That is, excuse me, that is so cross. Pays dividends. Big fight. Big win for Tong, or for DK, rather. Very nice victory coming out. Great stuff. 
Guys, it's been a pleasure casting for you, but that'll be the end of the Summit Chinese Qualifiers.